Water Water Commission. Four seventy five. Where you want to go with it? Yeah. Gotta get it. I don't want to get in your way there. No, go ahead. I don't want to be in your way. And then of course the dead ones that didn't make it and 
And then these are the shells. Mm -hmm. And we get those all out. Now, what do I got? See where they've absorbed more of their yolk and they're getting bigger. Mm -hmm. okay. Now those are pretty well absorbed. Uh... Well, no, these are just farther along yet. Those over there are the ones that have, have absorbed it. Mm -hmm. These still have a little bit. See, it's almost gone. Mm -hmm. Now those are the most advanced of the ones yeah, that you have. This is a take one. number one. Okay. And then that, that takes out the dead egg cell. Fish can go down through it. There's a whole lot of dead in that. There still get to be some eggshells. Are those dead ones in here? Dead ones. Dead ones in there. Yeah. Okay. That was all full. See how they kind of go through there? Yep. Yeah. And then that gets seeds out. Okay. Just kind of a way of keeping as much as it is. Well, I suppose that just adds to problems on the road if you don't keep, yeah. it, keep it as clean as possible. Ah, yeah. uh, you're welcome to visit the bank for a while if you'd like okay. to. I gotta go over and Okay, well, yeah, go ahead, Tom. I sure appreciate your help and everything.
fall 1990. Score your day.
out of the way so they don't infect you. It distinguishes your product from other products on the market today. Uh, what distinguishes these lures from most lures that are on the market is that they incorporate uh, the natural feed that salmon and trout are accustomed to going after with the built-in action of, a, of the plastic teaser head. So it's that marriage of the two, the marriage of the bait, the action that's created by the, the, uh, the plastic teaser lure that really sets them apart from the other artificial types of lures that you find on the market today. When I walk into a, a local tackle shop, Tom, uh, how would I distinguish your lures? Well, Rob, the lures are very distinctively packaged, and I've got some in front of me now, along with the baits that would be used with them, and I'm going to briefly run through that, and then we'll uh, show the, the fishermen how they work over the side of the boat a little bit later. Great. But they're very easy to recognize, Rob. For example, here I have a minnow teaser, and it uses small hole baits like uh, small herring or small anchovies, small smelt, in the four to six inch range. And uh, the packaging is, is very easily identifiable. As I say, the minnow teaser is here. Uh, here we have an example of finest quality Reese Davis five inch minnows. Now, the other whole bait lure that, that we're gonna concentrate on today is called the anchovy special. Now it's become a very popular lure as you're aware. It took uh, a 63 and a half pounder out of your marina last year, which won the Daiwa World Salmon Fishing Championships. And this particular lure, the anchovy special, would of course be used with anchovies, but it's also very effective with other whole baits in the five to seven inch range. Now those are what we call the whole bait lures. We also have the full line of, of uh, strip teaser lures as well. Now this is the one that you used when you got your 49 and a half pounder uh, and won the King Fisherman Contest in 1969. This is a standard original large strip teaser and it uses uh, a particular cut of large strip teaser herring strip and we'll explain how that works a little bit later. Uh, it's designed for slower trolling. The next one that we're going to deal with today is a super strip teaser and it looks very similar to the large strip teaser but I think when you see its action in the water you'll understand that it's entirely different and it has its own special cut of herring strip called super strip teaser herring strip. This particular lure was designed originally for coho and uh, is to be trolled at a, at a much higher speed. So for areas like the Great Lakes where the charter skippers and fishermen there are accustomed to going a little bit quicker, this lure would be ideal for that particular situation. Now the final one that we're going to talk about today is the Tiny Teaser. And again, this is a, is a herring strip lure, but it's a smaller variety of lure. It uses a, a long, thin cut of herring strip, and it's very popular where fish are feeding on smaller uh, bait fish, like small minnows or uh, bait fish of that nature. Tom, in my experience over the years, um, I've learned that uh, one of the most important things on, on any lure is proper lure action. What sort of tips can you give anglers about uh, Reese Davis product uh, quality teasers? That's a very good question, Rob, and at times people get a little bit leery about using bait because they're not exactly sure how the lure should respond in the water, but really it's pretty simple, especially with the, with the advent of the teaser lures because with the design of the plastic teaser head, that imparts almost 99% of the correct action to the lure, but there are some tuning type of operations that you can do that we'll get into a little bit later on the side of the boat. But the basic things about using the lure are maybe three or four points that, that the followers should be aware of uh, before they set the lure up and put it in the water to start to fish with it. The lure I have in my hand, Rob, is the original large strip teaser, and it's one of the herring strip models, very easy to use. Most of the action is created by the, the plastic lure head and the special cut of the herring strip. Now what the fisherman has to be aware of is he has to make sure that he puts the herring strip all the way into the plastic head so that there isn't a gap between the end of the lure and the end of the herring strip. That means if you had that gap in there, you'd have too much weight at the back end of the lure and it wouldn't react properly. Now the, the strip is positioned in the lure by using a toothpick. It goes through this side of the plastic, comes out through this side over here, and it should be cleaned off or, or clipped off like so with a pair of cutters to make sure that everything is nice and clean. Now the next thing that the, that the angler has to be aware of, which is very important, that in this blister, there's the point of a toothpick that's forced alongside the leader. That acts as a tension device, so you can set the hook anywhere you want it, and that hook will stay in the right position. Uh, for example, if you wanted the hook trailing at the tail end of the lure, or if you wanted to have it up right at the blister, it will hold it in that particular position. 
And from that point in on, Rob, it's simply a matter of putting the lure over the side of the boat and making some adjustments if necessary to get the correct action on it. Now, the second type of lure that we have is the whole bait lure. Now, in this case, I've got an anchovy special with an anchovy in it. And again, this is a very simple operation, but the difference is that with the anchovies or other whole baits, we have to set the hook into the bait to get the correct action. Remember with the herring strip, we just let the hook trail at the back end of the, of the herring strip. Now, it's the same operation. The anchovy is put into the lure, into the plastic head, forced right up to the top so you don't have a gap. You take a toothpick and you position that through the nose of the anchovy and cut it off nice and clean. You make sure that the toothpick forced alongside the leader in this little blister area is firm so that it holds the, some tension on the line. That allows you to position the hook where you want it. And the, the key factor is where you position the hook and the amount of bend that you put in the anchovy. Now in this case, I recommend that the hook be positioned right behind the dorsal fin. There it is right there and just above this line that separates the blue and the silver. That's the best position to create the best action on this particular lure. Now you also want to make sure that you've got the proper bend in it. And what we want to get is a nice even bend in the anchovy that creates that rolling action that we want uh, from these various types of lures. Now the other key thing, Rob, is that because strip teasers, minnow teasers, anchovies revolve in the water, that they must be fished with a good swivel on the other end of the leader, like this, which happens to be a six-speed uh, bead chain swivel. And it's very simple. Now, up on the side of the boat, we'll get into some specific adjustments later that deal with speed, etc. but that's your basic setup on the anchovy and your basic setup on the herring strip. Pretty simple stuff. Tom, the, uh, the strip teaser, uh, the strip is pre-cut to fit into the teaser head. That's right, Rob. Each lure has its own special cut of herring strip, and they're all hand cut, by the way, the way they've been done for the last 35 years, and they all fit exactly into each teaser head. And each model of strip teaser lure, that's the large strip teaser, super and tiny, has its own special cut of herring strip that maximizes the action of that particular lure. Now, I noticed with the lures that you have here today that uh, on the strip you had a single uh, hook, and uh, on the whole beats it was a treble hook. Yes, that's true, Rob. We have both single and treble hooks on our lures. Now, I, I prefer the single hook when I'm fishing with the herring strip, but they come with treble hooks on them as well. But with the whole bait lures, we generally use a treble hook in them so we can set one hook into the whole bait, and then we have two points available for the fish to strike on the outside. So we find the trebles are a little bit better. Now, in places like California, uh, where they have single hook restrictions, the anchovy special al also comes with a special, uh, specially designed single hook that maximizes the action and fits into that particular regulation down there. Tom, I know your most recent lure is the anchovy special, and in the uh, short time that it's been on the market, I've seen it help more uh, beginners and novice fishermen uh, have great success on Chinook fishing out here on this coast. Tom, let's show anglers the proper lure action over the side of the boat. You bet, Rod. That sounds like a good idea. Great. Okay. Tom, uh, you were mentioning, uh, you know, the small refinements and techniques uh, for adjustments on the lures. I wonder if you could show the anglers just exactly what you were talking about. Well, sure, Rob. Uh, <clears throat> the lures are designed to have their own built-in action, but occasionally you might run into situations where you're, you put the lure over the side of the boat, it's revolving a little bit too quickly, or if you put it over the side of the boat and it's not turning over at all, you have to know how to make some adjustments to get the correct action on it. <clears throat> now, this is valuable because when you've got uh, fishing situations where people already have a, a number of sets of gear down in the water, they don't want to be adjusting their boat speed because it's going to affect the action of the other lures. So we know, uh, or we can with these particular lures, simply make an adjustment on the lure uh, that satisfies any particular boat speed that you might, uh, might be trolling at, for example. <clears throat> now let's say, for example, that, that you put your lure over the side of the boat and it was trolling or it was revolving uh, too slowly. Well, what you would do then is first of all move the hook up towards the blister and perhaps cock it down a little bit like that. By moving that hook forward, it puts a bit more weight forward in the lure and causes it to revolve a little bit more quickly. Another thing you could do if you wanted to leave the hook at the back end is to take the plastic tail section of the lure and give it a bit of a bend down. That means it catches more water as you're, as you're trolling through the water and consequently causes the lure to revolve a little bit more quickly. 
Now, if your lure was spinning too quickly in the water, which isn't a very productive uh, action for catching very, very quality type of fish, then what you would want to do is leave your hook at the back end of the lure and take the tail section of it and flatten it out a little bit. That causes the lure to revolve a little bit more slowly in the water. Now, the lure that I've got here again, Rob, is the original large strip teaser, and this is how it should look in the water uh, to be performing correctly. How would you best describe the type of revolution or the type of role of all of your baits? What, what are you trying to uh, resemble? Well, what we're trying to resemble, Rob, is, is a, a particular bait fish. Now, whether it's a crippled bait fish or whether it's a, a wounded fish, I really don't know. That's the popular theory. What we do know is that the action that we get on the herring strip, when we check it on the side of the boat, triggers that stri a strike response when we've got the action the right way. Tom, how would you best describe that role for uh, anglers? Well, Rob, what we've got there is a fairly tight roll. That's the large strip teaser, and we've got the head and the tail basically turning on the same axis. <clears throat> nice tight revolution, turning at perhaps one to two revolutions per second. That's the type of action that you want to get with that particular lure. Now, the other one that's interesting is the super strip teaser, which is very much like the large, but it has an entirely different action, and it should probably be fished at a little bit higher speed. So we'll have a look at that one right now, Rob. Okay. Okay, this is a super strip teaser, Rob, and as I mentioned earlier, it was designed as a as a uh, coal fishing lure, and you can see it has a very erratic, uh, wide type of action on it, and you can travel with this lure at quite a high speed, but its action is entirely different than the action that we saw with the uh, large strip teaser that we had out uh, first over the side of the boat. A wide looping roll, erratic, the tail tends to flutter on it a little bit, uh, it can be fished at a very high speed as well, uh, which is more appropriate for fellows who like to travel a little bit quicker. Tom, what about the minnow teaser and the anchovy special? Well, let's have a look at them right now, Rob. The minnow teaser, of course, uh, Rob, is designed for use with small hole baits, like small herring, small anchovies, or uh, small smelt, for example. And uh, unlike the strip, we have to set the hook in the bait sure we get the right action. So it's the position of the hook in the bait, which is behind the dorsal fin and above that line that separates the blue and the silver, and the amount of curve in the bait that we have that creates the right type of action. If we want more revolutions on the bait, we take our leader and pull up on it and put more curve into the bait. If we want less revolutions on the bait, we take the hook, pull it back a little bit and straighten the bait out. Now the type of action that we want to get with the hole baits is very similar to the type of action that we want to get with a herring strip. It's a nice, tight, controlled revolution, probably one to two turns per second. So this is how the minnow teaser would look, Rob, with a, a five inch minnow in it. Very tight, snappy little roll. Uh, seems to have a bit of a hesitation in it. Uh, that should be really good when uh, game fish like salmon or trout are feeding on smaller sizes of baits. Very effective. Uh, that's a real good roll for that one right there, quite snappy. Now the anchovy special is a little bit different, Rob, and that's the one that you've got in your hand right now. We set that one up exactly the same way that we set up the, uh, the minnow teaser. We've got the hook positioned in the anchovy, behind the dorsal fin, and just above that line that separates the blue and the silver, it's the same situation. If we have more bend in the bait, it creates a faster revolution on it. If we have less bend in the bait, it will turn it at a slower rate of revolution. We can also do other things like moving the hook back down towards the tail and repositioning it. That will also slow down the rate of revolution of the bait. But this particular one with this anchovy or perhaps uh, uh, a larger size herring or a larger size smelt will be very effective as is the minnow teaser if fish are feeding on a little bit larger size of bait, maybe in the five, five and a half, up to seven inch range. I, <coughs> I've seen some of the anglers, uh, Tom, adapt a tandem hook set up on some of the larger baits as well. Oh, absolutely, Rob. You could use a trailing single hook that would come in behind this one and would be positioned about here as a, as a tandem operation. Uh, gives you a little bit extra hooking power uh, if you've got fish that are biting short. In other words, taking the tail section of the lure and missing the hook completely. So here's how the anchovy special looks, 
rub. Again, it's a very similar type of action, but this one is maybe a little bit more controlled. Uh, that's rolling a little bit slower, and that would be super effective for really big spring salmon yeah. uh, later in the year, for example. That's but great. that's a nice action right there. Great. Tom, can you use your teasers with a uh, dodger or a flasher? You bet, Rob, and they're very effective when they're fished behind dodgers and flashers. Certain times fish want to have that little bit of additional action that's put on the lure, or they like the idea of that attractor up front that draws them into the bait. So you can certainly fish them with uh, dodgers like uh, small number ones or O's or double O's, or flashers like your hot spots, or for example, a new dodger like the Super Release, which has uh, recently been brought out here locally and has proved to have been very effective. Now, we've got a, a setup on the side of the boat with a dodger, and we've got a small tiny teaser, which is a small cut of herring strip working behind a number one dodger. So let's have a look at it and see how it looks uh, in the water. Tom, I noticed that the, uh, the back and forward motion of that dodger creates an erratic motion in the, uh, in the revolution of the strip. Uh, that's right, Rob. What we've got is a, is a number one dodger with uh, about a 34, 35 inch leader and a tiny strip behind. And that type of combination is very effective for aggressively feeding fish. You can see how the back of that dodger really snaps that bait back and forth. Uh, very attractive action for, uh, for that particular combination. That's the tiny teaser. Uh, Rob, wasn't it about a year ago this time that you and I were out doing some filming and we happened to, to pop into that 40 pound Chinook salmon off Church Rock? That's right, Tom. That was a great fish. Going downtown. Whoa! Oh, here he comes up. Whoa! Look at this. Look at this. Whoa! Oh, you can burn it. Whoa! Look at that. Whoa! 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 Whoa! Look at Whoa! He's taking her out, eh? Look at that. A lot of line out there. Whoa! Whoa! He's really burning my hand, too, I gotta tell you. got a bump coming up. Whoa! Boy! He's way out there! Heavy fish. Heavy fish? Yeah. That's what we want. How oh, heavy is heavy, Rob? Oh, how about 3-0? <laughs> yeah, okay. I thought you were going to say maybe 6-0. Oh, You've oh, had oh. them before, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's good right there. Good. Ah, oh, jeez, this cost is going down awful good, Rob. This is a hack I minnow run. Yeah. <laughs> Be nice. He's a nice fish here. <laughs> yeah, he's a dandy, all right. Strong fish. I'd say probably high 30s anyway, close to a 4 0. <laughs> Isn't it time you thought about fishing with Reese Davis teasers and finest quality bait products?